Hello, you're watching On The Road and today we are very much literally <laughs> on the road. I'm Michelle and this is Adamo. Adamo, let's tell them where we are today. Big on the road vibes from us. We're at one of the most beautiful stadiums in Australia, Cooper's, oh, actually I can't say that. No, Hindmarsh, Hindmarsh Stadium. Stadium <laughs> which we've just sussed out the pitch. It is so it's immaculate. Amazing. You could have your Brazilian barbecue. You could, they could just serve it up on there and you could just have, I feel like the barbecue would even ruin it. It's that good that you don't you want to put yeah, any exactly. food on it. Exactly, you wouldn't even want to put it on that. It is so perfect. But yeah, big on the road vibes from us because we're in the middle of the uh, media driveway at the moment. So you yeah. might see some Ubers we dropping just saw, some... We just saw Izzy Christensen, yeah, who used to play for England. So she... Got the VIP she treatment. She, like, yeah, she got an right Uber in front of just before us. <laughs> and there's even a worker just munching on his dinner. Yeah, He's right there. A little, maybe a little you know what? Snack pack or it, it kind of looks uh, healthy. There's a bit of salad Ooh. sticking out. Look, we've got some fans, some Brazilian fans, yeah, right in front Brazilian of us. Brazilian fans are rolling in early, as you'd expect. Sell out. Here. Yes, that's why we're here. Brazil against Panama is going to be massive. As well. I know, Marta. I'm so excited for that. She is literally the first footballer in the women's game that I remember hearing of. She's the goat. Like yeah. there's no, you know, in, in sport, these certain sports, it's up for debate. There's, there's yeah. a few goats. When we're talking women's football, it's she's Marta. the one. She is the one. As you said, you just everyone knows her. She's yeah, so everyone. iconic, still going. I know it's insane. At age she's, 37. And I was just saying to you before that I think. I, th I thought she was actually older because she's been around for so long. I swear she's been around since I was like the tiniest child. <laughs> <laughs> I know. And then you think she was, she's was? she been balling 2007 World Cup when she got the best player, took Brazil all the way to the final. Yeah. Still chasing that elusive World Cup though that she deserves. Messi got his fairy tale moment for Argentina in the Men's World Cup. It wouldn't it be fitting if Marta, I'm being a football romantic here, but she deserves a World Cup. Oh yeah, it would be fantastic if she was able to. Well. Yeah, there's a, we're, we're on the lookout for any uh, well, maybe Brazilian TV. royalty. Yeah, Brazilian TV might be setting up right behind us because we are right in the mix. And Panama TV as well by the looks of it as well. We can't forget about Panama. Yeah, it's exciting for them. It's their first World Cup. They. It was a massive effort from them through the qualifiers. They've got some fantastic the players. Well. Marta Cox. They've Marta got their own Marta. Marta. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you were saying that. You love that. Uh, Riley Tanner as well. Who gets called Frozen because she looks like Elsa? By her own teammates. We didn't make I love that, that up. American born for anyone that doesn't know, but her mother is from Panama as well. She plays in America. Washington Spirit, a forward for them, 23 years old. She's She helped them get to the World Cup, scoring a solo goal. She did. It yeah. was it was superb. So she's got a lot of skill. I do really know, I keen. Love their to manager, see them. Nacho Quintana, the yeah. best name of any manager so Great far. Great pronunciation there. Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> and what I love about him as well, he's such a big advocate for equal pay between men and women. He's been lobbying for it back in Panama. And what he said is, he said he just wants these players to play with a smile on their face. It's their first female World Cup, and he wants them to just play that beautiful, fluid football and express themselves and make everyone back home in Panama happy. And I'm sure that this team is going to do it. And it doesn't get much bigger than your first game at this tournament, being yeah. against the Selecao as well. It's yeah, so great. I'm going to be pitch side for this game. So I'm super excited on, for that. Give yourself a little plug. <laughs> Come on, Michelle's going to be pitch side doing the live crosses on the broadcast as well. So, at so full tune time, in. Make I mean, sure you're, you're already tuning. tuning in anyway, but make sure you tune in for this one because I will be there. The only thing we're not happy about, which we're going to have to sort out, is no interviews, apparently. Surely Marta scores. We're going to get an interview with Well, Marta. and anyone, I'm, wondering, <laughs> I'm not wearing a jersey today because I thought I was going to wear an Italian jersey because they're playing right now. Forza Lea Zorde, let's go. <laughs> nil nil at the moment, they're playing very well. But I thought if I wear an Italy jersey, Marta scores, she sees us, I'm going to scare her off. And I don't have a Brazil jersey, yeah. so I've just gone very... You might have to take a Brazil jersey from one of the fans. They yes. have started very early, so the kickoff yeah. here is at... 8.30 p.m. This half an hour time difference. Yeah, Adelaide, can you just get with it? Can you either us. just go same as East or go with the West? Yeah, this half yeah. an hour is just silly. Oh, and our phones, one of my phones that we have, I've only got two phones, so I'm not that dodgy, but one of the phones wasn't updating. So I was like, oh, I've, it's already 1.30 p.m. Like, and then I checked and it was one. Well, yeah, you know my watch. It's always it's always messed up. It's Vine time when we're on the <laughs> East Coast. It's now on Marta time. It's just, I can't wait for the goat. You were speaking to some Brazilian journalists. I was oh, earlier. They are giving you the inside scoop. Yes, yeah, so, so I was, I, when I was going for my morning walk and I got some breakfast in the city, I wanted to see what Adelaide was all about because we don't have much time. But uh, I walked unknowingly past the Brazilian hotel okay. and there were a couple of journalists there. So naturally I went up to them and asked them uh, if they were with Brazil because I could hear that they were speaking Portuguese. I was just being nice. I knew they were Brazilian. And uh, yeah, one of the journalists said that, you know, Marta is the greatest player ever, no doubt. And she was saying though that bits, she's a bit more than Brazilian me 
media are a bit skeptical about her fitness. So Marta was out for 11 months with an ACL injury. She came back in February, but then she suffered a thigh muscle injury, one that's plagued her before. Uh, Pia Sundahaga said in a press conference that Marta's 100% ready to go, but the Brazilian media aren't convinced. Maybe they're just they're playing it down. They're downplaying it so they don't yeah. set themselves up to be disappointed as well. I wouldn't be surprised if she starts off the bench. Comes on. I'm going to save my prediction for the end, though. I'm going to yeah. call this game to an absolute T. That game, as we are, our cameraman, Paul, has just whacked up. These are the real MVP right here. Mr. Paulinho, our cameraman, <laughs> has just chucked on the Optus app. It's still nil-nil, I believe. I'm going to have a quick little peek. Sorry for the close-up on my big head, guys. Still nil-nil in the Italy-Argentina game. That's a massive game that because is a huge game. Sweden got it done. The Caroline Wozniacki. I found a little stat off our friend Claude's. Sweden have the most podium finishes at a FIFA Women's World Cup. Wow. Not named America, of course, without winning one. So the eternal bridesmaid. Always the bridesmaid, never the bride. Maybe it could be this one. So big game in that group that's going on right now. We've also got a big game Germany-Morocco as well. But let's talk about the big game last night. France versus Jamaica. Yes. That, Scenes in Sydney. Sydney delivered. That was huge from, also just on the score, that was huge from Jamaica to be able to hold France hey, well, to a new half. First half, they didn't give France a sniff. They were frustrating. And then the French started opening up a little bit. Interesting tactics. Lots of crosses, which nearly worked as well because they hit the crossbar. They also hit the post. But they frustrated them and got their first ever point at a FIFA yeah. Women's World Cup. That's how far women's football has come because Jamaica, respectfully, at the last World Cup, they were the punching bag. They got, I think they scored one goal and they conceded 12. Yeah. No points. How far they've come, though, in four years. But the, oh, Also, no. just, just on that, on Jamaica, though, before you get to the... The big what's talking it, yeah, point. The yeah, big you know talking what's point. coming. Uh, they, they, oh, I guess there's so much drama off the field here at this World Cup, but they've got crowdfunding to get to be here. Yeah, one so, of the mums in the team or something organised yeah. like a GoFundMe just to yeah. get them over here. Insane, yeah. insane effort to. And just before you get to the other point, I was listening to a podcast this morning, and they were saying, "Oh, is it awful or not that the World Cup is here in Australia and New Zealand because it's so far away, it's so far for the European teams and the American teams? It's at the worst time." And I was like, "Welcome to our lives." Yes, exactly right. <laughs> Anyone watching from outside of Australia or New Zealand want to question whether or not we are true football fans? Try waking up at two a.m. in the morning to watch your exactly, favorite team that when it's dedication. freezing cold, or you've got work, and then you've got work four or five hours exactly. later. We're not kids anymore. I used to be able to just bounce out of bed two hours yeah. sleep. I'm an old man now. I need my eight <laughs> hours. So don't, that before you guys start coming for us and saying, oh, you guys aren't true fans because you can't get to games, try and do a 2 a.m. wake up. But we love having this World Cup here because you see scenes like you saw in Sydney, 40,000 plus Such to a watch good turnout. that game. All my stories on Instagram, everyone was so at jealous. that game. I'm yeah. so jealous. Um, it was Sydney so cool. delivered and so did Jamaica as well. But the big talking point, Kadisha Bunny Shaw picking up a second yellow in the dying minutes their manager, the Jamaican manager, he doesn't have hair. But if he did, he'd be pulling it out because it just you didn't need to do that foul. Now, some people no. are saying that Wendy Renard, she she was sliding a little bit, but it was a silly challenge, Michelle. And now they're going to miss their main the woman. star player. Yeah, the yeah. star player for that big game against Panama, which is the game that they probably would have thought they're going to get the win most yeah. likely out of this whole group because it's a very tough group. But silly second foul. I thought the first yellow card wasn't a yellow. I thought that was a little bit harsh, but maybe it was Bunny Shaw just taking out her frustration because those French players were all over her like a cheap suit, just fouling her. Oh, was, that, it was yeah, a rugby tryout for some of them. They were just dragging her down, doing whatever they could. I mean, the French could. aren't too bad when it comes to rugby, they right? Are, there's a World Cup coming up in that too, so maybe they, they were just auditioning, but they do anything they could do just to bring Bunny Shaw down. She also had a free kick. Great save by the goalkeeper. You know what else we've seen? Well, before we just, I'm getting on too many <laughs> yeah. tangents here. Shout out to the goalkeepers. The Women's World Cup. We've seen some great goalkeepers. Yeah, like we have. there at the end. Bang, huge save for England. Held, made them hold on to three points. We've been seeing some great goalkeeping. It's been, and I'm all for the defenders as well. I'm a defender myself, a yeah. Sunday League defender. But defenders and goalkeepers, their stock's right up here. It's a, the, the strikers have been struggling because we haven't seen as many goals. Too many Actually, goals. Yeah. I've been speaking to a lot of people around here. The taxi driver that, that brought me in today, he was saying that he's been watching the Women's World Cup. But he's surprised at the lack of goals. And I was like, you know what? That's good because the quality of the of the women's game is improving. And you know what as well? They're not boring games. Like no. that nil-nil last night was one of the best nil-nils yeah. you're ever going to watch. The it's one nil, entertainment. Yeah, the England-Haiti game, which is still, in my opinion, the game of the tournament, that, that ain't the one nil. So we don't need lots of points. This isn't basketball. This is football. This is what it's all exactly. about. Exactly. It's Seeing a frustration. It's a chess it's match. It's just beautiful and it's why... It's the world game. Exactly. All right. We are here for the Brazil-Panama yeah. game, and we put out a poll asking who takes the win. Obviously, I have a Brazil. I know what, yeah. <laughs> Landslide? 
Yeah, 89% of fans believe that Brazil will win. I feel like we didn't even need a poll for that. Any Panama fans, <laughs> get, get in the comments below. Let us know your predictions we as wrong. well. You never know in football. Yeah. You really never know. You never know, guys. Get your predictions in as well for the tournament as well. Can Marta get the fairy tale ending to the GOAT oh, career that she's so had? Good. I'd love it. All right, Germany against Morocco. Big game. Big game. Big game. game. Before I get your thoughts on it, let's hear what Adriano Del Monte has to say about it. in the Adelaide Hills and uh, Germany they're, they're a powerhouse when it comes to women's football and men's Definitely. football they're just a general powerhouse and they've got Alexandra Pop I love watching her play because she I use the term goal scoring machine all the time yep. she is literally she the definition, is the definition of it, of it. Yeah. and she got ruled out right before the final of the Euros as well she had scored in every game leading up to that game who knows she plays that game who knows if it comes home to England and yeah. she might have got another one she ended up sharing the golden boot with Beth Mead she is a beast. There's no other way to describe it. Goal scoring machine. I can't wait to see her at this tournament because I feel like the wider footballing public is now going to finally get to see what she's all about. Yeah. Coming up against Morocco, I fell in love with Moroccan. Everything about Moroccans, I fell in love with them. From the, the Qatar World Cup. World Cup. Yeah. The, some of the most beautiful football fans in the world. And it's a beautiful part of the world, North Africa. So it's got everything you can, you love about North African football flair, passion, an amazing national anthem, guys, as well. And they only know one gear, this women's team, just like the men's. Attack, attack, attack. So, guys, when you watch them, crank up the volume as well, okay? Yeah. Because they are a proper underdog as well. The first ever Arab nation as well to make a Women's World Cup. Wow, that's a nice little fact there. Yeah. Well, you've had your say on that game. Now we can actually get it from Adriano Del Monte. <laughs> Group H gets underway in Melbourne. It's a David v Goliath battle. It's Germany up against Morocco. Germany, the number two ranked nation in the world. Two-time FIFA Women's World Cup winners. They've been at every tournament that has come before us. Morocco, they're at their first ever tournament, but they're coming in with some very good form. Surprising finalists in the Women's African Cup of Nations 12 months ago. They lost the final in front of 50,000 fans against South Africa on home soil. But this time around, renewed energy off the back of their men's team doing exceptionally well in Qatar. Can they bring that same energy here in their opener against Germany? A player to watch for Morocco, Gislan Shebak, the captain, the most capped player, the top goal scorer, and the player of the tournament at the Women's African Cup of Nations on home soil 12 months ago. She will certainly have to bring it if they are to have any chance against the Germans because they are highly rated. And many's tip to go on and win the tournament, including mine. A player to watch for Germany. There are many, many stars indeed. But Lena Magul, the Bayern Munich superstar, an underrated one to certainly keep a close eye on. A real talent in midfield. She scored in Germany's defeat in the Euro final to England 12 months ago. One of many key players to keep an eye on for this Germany team. It's Germany up against Morocco, 6.30 p.m. Eastern and Santa time kickoff in Melbourne. Thanks, Adriano. So he pointed out Lena Magul is one of those to watch, of course. And there's Lena Oberdorf. There's, they've got so many quality plays. We always go on about Alexandra Pop because she's, a, you know, she's always scoring the goals. But there's the ones that are pulling the Oberdorf streaks. Oberdorf as well. Best young player at the Euros. Best young player at the most recent Champions League. Went on that run with Wolfsburg, who went all the way to the final as well. This team is stacked, yeah. Germany, and I have a feeling. I just—I was checking the comments very quickly. Someone asked me, it was Samantha Yerman. She asked who I think is going to be the Golden Boot winner. Say Pop. It's going to be Pop. <laughs> really? I think it's going to be Pop. I yeah. feel like this is her tournament. It's going to be between her and I said Esther Gonzalez, Gonzalez. Well at <laughs> yeah. the start. I'm, I'm changing like the Adelaide weather because the rain's <laughs> yeah, coming it's down about as well. Yeah, it's about to rain now. But I'm going to go Pop. 
pop he's going to get. Pop he's okay. going to be popping goals left, right, and center and get that golden boot. I that would have said prediction. before the tournament that it was going to be Sam Kerr, but that's going to be very hard, given that who knows when she's going to come back. She's capable of amazing things, but yeah, yeah. that would be tough. Staying on Germany before we get to Australia, let's talk a, a little bit about Harndorf, because we were there, a spectacular area in Adelaide Hills, very, very German. Adelaide in general is so beautiful. Yes. I never really thought much of Adelaide. Sorry, Adelaide, but I really <laughs> never did. No, honestly, I'll be straight up. <laughs> Adelaide, I've been sleeping on you. Yeah. I didn't know much about you and I didn't know much about your game. Adelaide is a great spot. It's, 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 so it's everything you love. It's small. Yeah. It's small. It's nice and quiet, but it's still a city. I need a little bit of buzz. Yeah. I'm a city yeah. slicker. Yeah. I need They're a little bit Sydney. of buzz, but it's, it's beautiful yeah. as well. And we drove out, for anyone that doesn't know what Handorf is, we drove out about half an hour outside of Adelaide to yeah. a place that is literally like a slice of Germany. Yeah in Adelaide. It, it, it blew my mind. Like Even when I saw photos and heard the story, I couldn't quite wrap my head around, like, yeah. why Adelaide? And we found Germans there as well, who we had on the show yesterday. But the other thing is that if you're waiting to, you know, if you're hoping to get an Uber or a taxi, it's very difficult. We had to wait like half an hour yeah, for us to, to get back into the city. One, three cabs and, uh, <laughs> because Dez's taxis wasn't, he, they Dez weren't working. Dez doesn't work Sundays yeah, and he wasn't Ubers don't come out Sunday. that far. <laughs> exactly. All right. We've spoken about Harndorf, but let's show you what else we got up to at Harndorf. If you're dreaming of a Euro trip, well, think again. Why get on a 30-hour flight when you can get a taste of Germany in our own backyard? We're at Handorf in the Adelaide Hills. Let's see what it's all about. I'm joined by two Handorf locals, Cecilia and Armin. Armin, tell us, how did Handorf come about? Why did the Germans choose Adelaide? So Handorf is uh, Australia's oldest German town and the uh, German Lutherans came and so for religious freedom they came over here and uh, Captain Dirk Meinhardt's Hahn from Westerland uh, negotiated the land sale for them here and so they named, in gratitude, they named their town Handorf, meaning Hahn's village. Cecilia, what's, a, what's so special about Handorf? A small village with a lot of tourists, with a great soccer club, the Handorf Soccer Club. Let's talk about the soccer club because you've had an involvement in football for quite a while. How far does it go back? So I started sort of in the 1970s where women actually didn't play soccer or were not allowed to play soccer that much. It just started. But when you see where we are now, where we got the professional women playing and uh, where we got really good grassroots teams and grassroots work for the girls, um, I think that's a huge improvement. Yeah, the quality has improved and it keeps on improving each World Cup. Well, thank you so much. How do you say cheers in German? Prost! 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 <laughs> Prost. As the Germans say. Yeah, that was wunderbar, <laughs> as they also say. Sorry, I'm laughing because they're doing a sound check. Yeah. That PA lady, she's got some pipes on her as well. <laughs> Beyond greatness is the chant as the rain starts to come down. It starts yeah, to it's starting to down rain on us. Here in Adelaide. Yeah, well, it's very cold here. We said this yesterday. I'm just still surprised by how cold it is. We had a bit of sun in the morning, so it was nice warmth. But since then, it's just cloudy. I'm hanging in there. I'm hanging in there. I still haven't lost my voice and I still haven't yeah, lost it yet. Yeah, we're all good at the moment. All right, let's talk about the Matildas. Every single day we're trying to find yep. out what's happening with Sam Kerr. We saw her at training, she's all bandaged up on her calf, but that's not, that's normal, right? It's not, that's not a bad sign. I'm not. Yeah, just I'm, keeping the compression on there. Yeah, I'm not a physio, but I did see what Mark Swartzer was, and some of our Optus staff who were in Matilda's camp were saying, and they were saying that they're not seeing a limp. Is that true? Yes, they're saying that she's walking Okay. Okay. That's I don't what know. I, I wonder if she's putting it on for the cameras, trying to like oh, keep everyone. It's mind cool. games. Maybe I she's don't. fine. Maybe we just don't know. She's doing beep tests and yo-yos <laughs> and, and playing in training games, oh. and it's just proper mind games. I don't think so. No, she'd I don't think so. There, she would be, be out there. goals, but yeah. let's just hope it's not as severe as yeah. it could be. The other thing is that uh, it's it's great that we've got Schwartzy, Amy Chapman, and Kat Haddad as well. They're all with the Matildas in camp with them, so they're getting all the insights and they're also interviewing them as well. You can check out those interviews on the Optus Sport app and across all our platforms on social. But let's hear what's the latest from Schwartzy and Amy. We're back here at the Matildas training base, and of course it's Sam Kerr watch. Yesterday she didn't have the compression sock on, today she does. Is that reason to have concern? Very eagle-eyed of you there, Swartzy. Uh, no, I don't think so. I think uh, all eyes are, of course, on Sam Kerr's calf. Uh, we don't have any really um, 
updates of any great substance. I don't think the compression sock means too much, but it's great to see her still out here. The good news is Claire Hunt joined the team today, so she did a full training session. As far as we're aware of, Alana Kennedy didn't. She trained a lot on her own. Is, are we worried about that now? Yeah, I think there is something to be spoken about with this one. That's two sessions in a row with Alana Kennedy. We know she hasn't played many minutes leading into this tournament. Her first 90, of course, in that opening match. And they do have a player like Claire Pockinghorn to step in. So I think if we don't see Alana play again tomorrow, I would suspect we might see a change there. And speaking of eagle eye, we did spot that Claire Pockinghorn has been put up for a press conference in the coming days, which is usually a starting player. Thanks, Schwartzy and Amy. I'm glad you guys agree with us. There's nothing to worry about right now. Com yeah. Those those bandages are normal for compression. Tranquilo, as they say. Tranquilo, yeah. yeah. <laughs> as Ronaldo says a lot. Well, God, it, I, I mean, we should move on from uh, Sam Kerr. I'm getting distracted by the... There's so many noises. You guys probably can't hear. There's so many noises and... They're pumping Dua Lipa and all this type of stuff behind us before as well. We are in the mix at the moment. Yeah, and it's Can building up. It's, yeah, it's really She'd building up. It. It's um, yeah, it's pretty cool being here and being amongst it. We, I mean, we do have a really good job because we we're across everywhere. Being I mean, able to we're travel the around fans, Australia we're watching the football games. doesn't get yeah. much better. No. And if anyone's yeah. at the stadiums, I saw your comment, Cristiano Brandao. He said he's coming to the stadium. Oh, come join if us. If you then. see us, if you see us, you see us in Optus gear, come join us as well. Yeah. We'll get you on a video, we'll get you somewhere. Yeah, we'll get you in the broadcast so Definitely. You, we can, you know, show what this is all about, the vibes, and Brazilian fans are oh, the, best. the best. Yeah. They are the best. Well, let's go back to Australia because um, who do you reckon this is the most famous Australian? Let me just ask you that first. Oh. Wow, that's tough. Yeah. At the moment? Yeah. Oh, she put me on the spot there. I'd probably say... Is it Hugh Jackman or maybe Russ? Is Russell, Russell Crowe's Australian? Even though he was born in New Zealand, like yeah, Russell Crowe? Yeah, he's Crow? an adopted. But um, you'd say, you would say big. Hugh Jackman. Hugh Jackman, you'd say. Not to be confused with Huge Jackman. <laughs> Although he is huge. He's he great. is huge. He had this good luck message. Go the Matildas against Nigeria on Thursday. You guys are going to be amazing. You've already won the first one. Let's keep rolling. Come on. Wow, if you've got Wolverine on your side, surely that counts for so much I'm so much distracted. More. I don't know where to look. I've got Wolverine <laughs> up here. I've got Italy right there under the camera. And then I've got the comments coming yeah, in what do people as well think? because we've been teasing these guys. Well, let's read some out. Drover said, Forza Azzurri. We love that. Nina, big Azzurri fan as well. She's been commenting oh, throughout as well. So lots of Italians as well. What are you Italian fans thinking? Because first half, I was watching it second by second. I'm a little bit distracted yeah. now as well. Yeah, though. I'm keeping my eyes on it as I'm well. I'm trying it's to at the multitask, moment. which as you know, men, we're not the best at. <laughs> lots of Igor as well. Vai Brazil, we love that. I can't wait for the Brazilian Vai fans Brazil. to roll that. in. Vai Brazil. Yeah. Beautiful. Oh. Beautiful people. And just, just so... The name of more iconic joy than Brazilians in football. It's just, yeah. it's a match made in heaven. Yeah. And they bring, you know, they bring the noise, they bring the vibes, the vibes they bring the colour, they bring everything. Football. They're going to give life to this tournament. And, I mean, we're a few days in, so we've been waiting for this moment, really. We certainly have. <laughs> so should we, 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 what was that prediction yesterday? I can't even remember. I think we said, Oh yeah. I think I said 2-1 France, so wrong. Yeah, and I think I might have said 3-1 or something you know, like I'm that. You know, I'm going to go different this time, guys. I'm not going to give you a score prediction. I'm just going to predict the moment. Marta is going to come on. <laughs> Brazil are going to get a penalty because we've seen a lot of them this World Cup. Marta will slot it. And that will be her sixth World Cup that she has Ooh. scored at, which is a record for males and females. The GOAT. Literally the GOAT. I am going to give a score prediction because we have to. Um, I don't know. It's so... Oh. Surely it's a win for Brazil. But then this tournament has been so unpredictable. So can't sleep on I, can't, I can't say that it's going to be thrashing. I want to respect Panama as well. I'm thinking this out so much. It's really hard. Okay, I'm going to say 2 0. Okay. Hopefully, Marta. I'm, We'd love to yeah. see that. And then maybe you like get a little post game interview as well. That would be really, really that would cool. Be seen. Stay tuned. Well, that's all we have time for. My nose is getting so runny because it's so cold. <laughs> yeah, let's get undercover. Let's get this camera. Let's put something over it as well because it's starting to rain. And I can see that our cameraman's starting to stress a little bit. Yeah. And I don't blame you because it's an expensive camera. So let's get this undercover as well. Guys, remember, you can catch the rest of the Italy game, which is. Still nil-nil, that big Germany-Morocco game, and then the main event, the GOAT. Hopefully, Marta plays against Panama. Don't Hopefully. sleep on Panama either, but great so buffet of women's football games as well coming up. Yeah, we'll see you tomorrow.